at First Presbyterian. Glad to see all of y'all here. We're going to be doing a lot of singing. We got Mike on the organ. We have our good friend Chase, who stood in for Mike a few months ago. We loved him so much, we dragged him back. So thank you, Chase, for being here as well to give us some special music. We're going to then quiet things down, have some time for prayer, have communion, light a lot of candles. This is the night that we celebrate the birth of our Savior. And we are going to just keep on doing that through singing. All the music, all the words are in your bulletin, so you don't have to go flipping back and forth with pages. So we're just going to keep right on going. The Christian friends rejoice.
Why don't I invite all the kids up to help us light the Advent candles. And this, for all you folks who, who normally are here, this is the quiz that I was mentioning. So anyone who wants to come up and help light the Advent candle, it's always fun to play with fire. So come on down. So, in a lot of churches, they call the Advent candles boring things like peace, hope, love, and joy, which are good. Most churches do that, but in this church, we come up with new names for them every year. And um, so we're going to start with the first one. You're still going to get the help. But you don't have to do this. I'm going to just guide your hand. We're going to go and we're going to light this candle. Okay, anybody out there remember what the first candle stands for? You actually don't remember. Because you weren't here when I told you what it stood for. Okay, somebody shout it out. Guys, deliver me. Deliver me. Thank you. Okay. Let's see you and the let's go. We're going to do this. So come around here. You have to keep it all. Okay, anybody remember what the second candle was? Deliver me. Come on, guys. Come near. Near. Come near. You want to do the third one? Third one. Holy Spirit. You're close. What does the Holy Spirit do? Guide me. Me. Guide me. And then, fourth one, somebody will have to have been at Whispering Pines this morning. Anybody who was at Whispering Pines remember the fourth one? Fourth. Fourth one is new life. We pray to God to come down. We ask for God to come near. And in Christ, God comes near. We then seek guidance from the Holy Spirit and we get new life. You guys, this fourth candle is the candle that represents Jesus. In a little bit, I'm going to invite you all back up here, and we're going to read the Christmas story. And when, at the end of reading the Christmas story, you'll help me light the fourth candle, the candle that's in the middle. Okay? Thank you guys for coming up. You guys can go back to your seat, and then when we do the Christmas story, you can come up again. <laughs> you want to stay up here? So come down, come near, I'm sorry, deliver us, come near, guide me, and new life, which brings us to John's gospel. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. 
all things came into being through him. And without him, not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life. And the light was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. In Christ we find all light. And in Christ we find new light. The answer to that prayer we make when we ask God to deliver us, to come near to us, to guide us. And in that, we find new life. We're going to sing a little song. We've been singing it all during Advent. It's called Do Not Delay. You can remain seated. So why don't y'all sit on the front pew there, and I got some halos here, and everybody who gets a halo becomes an angel. So you get to be an angel, you get to be an angel, you get to be an angel, and you can put them on if you want, you don't have you get to be an angel. You get to be an angel. You get to be an angel. And because Regan's really close, I have one more left. Regan gets to be an angel. <laughs> so here's the job of angels, okay? And y'all can help. Y'all can self appoint as angels too. Whenever you hear the word angel, you get to say glory to God. Can you do that? Can you say glory to God? Glory to God. Glory to God. So whenever I say the word angel, you say glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Right. You've got that. So this is the story of Christmas, the story of the birth of Jesus Christ, the one who came in to save the world. 
So when Jesus' mother, Mary, had been engaged to Joseph, but before they had lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. She found this out because she was visited by an angel. Uh, let's try it again. She found this out because she was visited by an angel. Okay, we need to try it one more time. She found this out because she was visited by an angel. That's better. Her husband, Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to disgrace Mary, planned to dismiss her quietly. But when he had decided to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. And the angel said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save all the people from their sins. And at this point, the angel left. And Joseph did as the angel told him. Oh, that's good. <laughs> that's good. Let, let's help everybody else catch up. Joseph did as the angel it told him to do. So then there was a decree from the emperor who was like the big super honcho, like the president, but even more powerful, that all the world should be registered. And this was the first registration, and it was taken while Canarius was governor of Syria. And all had to go to the towns where they grew up to be registered. So Joseph went from the town of Nazareth, where he and Mary lived, to Judea, to the city of David, called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and the family of David. And he went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was expecting a child. Well, they were there, the time came for her to give birth, and she gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him in a blanket, and laid him in the manger, because there was no place for them in the room. And in that region, there were some shepherds living in the fields. They were keeping watch over their sheep. And then an angel, glory glory to God. oh good, I thought you'd fall asleep, <laughs> of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and the shepherds were terrified. But the angel, said to them, do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in a blanket and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a whole bunch of other angels and they all sang together glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favored and then the angel left and the shepherds went to Jerusalem to Bethlehem rather where they found Mary and Joseph and the baby wrapped in a blanket and lying in a manger. And when they had seen this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them, and what the angels what the angels had said and done. Now, sometime later, there were some wise men called Magi, who were living way in the east, and they saw a star in the sky, and they followed that star, and they came to the court of King Herod, 
and said, Where is the child who has been born king of the Jews? For we observed his star and its rising and has come to pay him homage. And when King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the super smart people who he had in his employment, he asked them, who is this child who is king of the Jews? And they told him that he would be found in Bethlehem. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word, so that I may also go and pay him honor. And when they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. And when they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. And on entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and they gave him gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. And having been warned by an angel in a dream, where the angel said to them, do not return to Herod. And so at the angel's instruction, they went to their own country by another road. So that is the story of how Jesus was born in a manger many, 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 many long time years ago. And now we get to light the last candle on our wreath, the white candle, which is called the Christ candle. And who hasn't lit a candle? You haven't lit a candle? Okay. Thank you guys for helping me tell the Christmas story and being really, really good angels. And you can say angels. And if I ever say angel again, what do you say? Glory to God. Glory to God. Good. And I think we're going to sing. Are we singing again? Yep. Yep. Joy to the world. Jay will please stand.
Well, hello there. This is awfully fine music. If you want, you can clap. That's okay.
the baby. I mean, it was clear we were to stay by the door. I mean, my own daughter didn't let me see my grandchildren for 24 hours. You'll get them sick, she said. You smell like sheep, she said. Why do you think paid your college tuition? Those sheep. And then, anyway, and then we went home. And life went on, as it does. And we didn't think about it, I didn't think about it, except every once in a while when I would be sitting there on that hill and the wind would shift and the brook would change its tune and the grass would grow a little tense and I'd have this feeling of joy. A little feeling of joy, like the world was shifting just a little. Years later, I saw it. This person they called Jesus. I moved to Bethany with my daughter. Bethany's a town right outside of Jerusalem, and my daughter and her husband had a little stall in the market in Jerusalem. I helped them out some, but mostly I went to this garden called Gethsemane. A bunch of us old shepherds would hang out there. It was the only place in Jerusalem you could hear the grass grow. And occasionally, a young man would show up. I knew who he was. I mean, I hadn't connected one with the other yet, but I knew who he was. Everybody knew who he was, but he was the one who raised Lazarus. And Lazarus was my sister's husband's brother's second cousin. They're step brothers, if you're following the genealogy. The word gets around fast in a place called Bethany, but I had it connected two and two when I would see him come in the garden. But I noticed whenever he would come into that garden, he would sit, he never talked. He would sit, be silent, like he was listening to the wind listening to the stream, listening to the grass. And the thing is, the amazing thing is, it seemed as if they were listening back. But I didn't connect that manger with this Jesus until I was in Bethany on the street and I saw this man with his mother, and I recognized her instantly, the way she looked at him, the spark in her eye, the way she stood and held herself. She had been a mighty woman in that stable, and she was a mighty woman now, and it clicked, it clicked. And this man, this teacher, this healer had been the very one that the whole cosmos had erupted in song around. It wasn't long after I saw Jesus with his mother that I heard he'd been arrested. I heard he'd been killed in our garden. How dare they! How dare they do such a thing in the only place in Jerusalem where you could hear the grass speak? It was a few days later that I found myself back in the garden. And I just sat and I cried. Not for Jesus, I didn't really know him, but for the garden the event that happened there, for the way that the grass had been turned into mud, the way that the creek had been filled with trash, the way the wind had just stopped 
love, a sword slay in the weeds, and at my silence, it's like all creation had stopped its song, and I sat there, and I cried, and then as the sun came up, I noticed the grass starting to perk its way up through the mud. I noticed that the brook had found a song through all the trash and the footprints left behind. I noticed that the wind had changed direction and picked up. I noticed that a rock sitting on the ground, bloody from the conflict, had started singing, and I heard, heard from deep within myself and outside of myself, from somewhere and nowhere, from below and above, from the very womb of the cosmos, I heard that song the angels had sung so, so long. And then I knew faith, Bethlehem, Messiah, good news, great joy. And I felt sitting there in the one place in Jerusalem, you could hear the grass grow. Sitting there. Felt the earth shudder. Slowly, slowly, it began to turn.
Nice to have a break. We're going to shift the mode of the service and go into a time of prayer as we make our way ultimately to the communion table. What, what do you need at this time to be made? What in your life do you need God to make new? Why have you called out to God saying, come Come near to them, guide me, and make, make me new. We're going to lift that up in prayer today. I'm going to lead you through a bit of a prayer exercise. We're going to start by singing a very simple song that goes, In the manger lies, in the manger lies, in the manger lies new life. That's all there is to the song. It's a bit of a song we sang earlier. So I'm going to invite you into a time of prayer and meditation. And then we're going to go back to that little bit of a song. And then we're going to do a bit of a longer prayer. And then we will sing another carol. But now let's just enter into prayer space. Sing that little bit of a song. In the manger life. In the manger in the manger lies new life. Go into a room in your house with a Christmas tree. Or if you want, you can just hang with the tree behind you. Get more than one Christmas tree, whichever is your favorite. Your house is quiet. You are alone. Maybe that's normal. Maybe everyone has left on an errand, or maybe it's late at night. Everyone's asleep but you. Things are going on in your head that won't stop. You're alone. The tree is there. You're sitting. And under the tree is a box. There's only one box under the tree. And it has your name. And in that box, there's one thing that you need right now to bring new life to you. It's your gift from Jesus, that one thing that you need right now to bring new life to you. What is it? that is in that box. What is in that box? I invite you now to get up and walk to the tree. Reach under it, pick up that box, and carry it back to your seat. And begin to open it. Take your time. It's a valuable gift. Take your time. I have a bow. Wrap the paper. Slip the tape. Open it up and reach into that box and grab and hold in your hands that one thing. That one thing that you need 
for the things of life right now. That one thing you need to heal, that one thing you need to tell, that one thing where you need peace, that one peace that you need in your life. What are you holding in? Is it what you expected to be in the box? What, what are you holding in your hands? What are you called to do? How can you live with it? Pray what's in your hands. Pray that gift. Lift it up to God. Ask him to come down. Ask him to come near. Ask him to guide you how to use this gift. Keep praying this gift. Keep holding this gift. As we go back to that simple little song, keep holding it even as we go later to the community. <clears throat> This gift, pray this gift. <laughs>
angel. As they come to the communion table, know that First Presbyterian Church of Columbiana welcomes anyone and everyone to their communion table. It does not matter where you have been. It does not matter where you think you're going. It does not matter who you are, what you've done, what you've left undone. If you are desirous of being present with Christ on this you are welcome to the table. Now this is the first time we've actually done past communion since the pandemic. So this is, is so I'm putting out there, I'm gonna, I'm gonna need four elders. Figure it out in the next three minutes. Really one minute, who you'll be. But I'm gonna need four elders to um, help serve communion. We come to this table and you can remain seated. Let's just sing this wonderful little carol. Break forth of beauty of heaven and heaven.
so that we may be your body, the body of Christ, in our lives, in our homes, in our communities, and in the world. Join with me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debts. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. On the night of his arrest, Jesus Christ took bread and after giving thanks, he broke it and blessed it and gave it to his disciples saying, take ye, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, Jesus took the cup and he blessed it and he said to his disciples, take this and drink of it and do this in remembrance of me. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I ask four elders to come up.
broken for you.
and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of this body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace, and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. As
the hand is not old and your candle still sits back there. You hold out of the box that was under the tree. Hold that gift and pray that gift into this Christmas Eve evening, into Christmas Day, and more than that, into each and every day that we want Pray it up to God. Wrestle with it. Think on it. Keep it out with the Spirit's guidance. How to live that gift, that healing, that hope, that peace of truth. Thank you. As you go from this candlelit evening into whatever business may remain and into the joy of the morning, know that the love of God, the fellowship of Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit will be with you now and always. Hallelujah.